Hey everyone, this is Zach Attack Reviews, and I'm Zach. Thank you for joining me as I break down the good and the bad of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. One of my most anticipated movies of the year. Did it live up to my hype? Did it live up to everyone's hype? That's what I'm going to be talking about right now and breaking down the intricacies of the movie. But before that, I will hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you can be notified of other videos I do. With that said, let's go. With this movie, I think that you should go in with knowing almost nothing. Just your prior knowledge to the MCU. Watching, definitely watching WandaVision. If you don't watch that show, if you haven't watched that show, there's going to be a lot of this that's lost on you. But in terms of trailers, behind the scenes, plot synopsis, try not to look up too much stuff because it's, it's a very spoilery story on like almost every aspect of it. So I think that you should just try to go in blind other than watching the first Doctor Strange and and Endgame, Infinity War, and WandaVision. I'm gonna give you a little synopsis of what it's about. It's about this character named America Chavez, a brand new character from the comics that are introduced in this movie. She has the power to travel from one multiverse to another. That's her power in this really cool effect when she punch holes like out of nowhere and she's at, these demons are after her and they're coming after her because they want her power and she becomes to our universe where she runs into our version of Doctor Strange and he decides he's going to protect her from these demons but because of the way these demons are he decides to enlist the help of Wanda who's out in the whatever wilderness or something like that just staying isolated but he wants her help to protect America Chavez That's that's all you need to know about the plot without be things being too spoilery. Some of it was in the trailers and things like that. So I'm going to start off what I like about the movie, The Good. Yeah! One complaint that the MCU's had for a lot of their films is that they kind of feel samey. They kind of look all the same. You just pl plug and play different characters and different stories into it. But for the Phase 4, you can see that Kevin Feige and crew are letting these directors and writers kind of put more of their stamp on their movies with Shang-Chi, The Eternals definitely, and it's a lot of the MCU Disney Plus shows. But with this movie, this was the biggest stamp that a director has done on a movie in the Marvel, Marvel Cinematic Universe ever. Sam Raimi came in and put so much visual style, quirkiness, and different motifs, and camera angles, transitions, the way it was color graded, the way that the dial the, was it dialect, the dialogue was, it just feels very it still feels like it's in the MCU but it's just being elevated because it's a lot of different visual styles and things that we're getting this is a gorgeous movie a lot of these movies in phase four have been absolutely gorgeous and this one's the best one looking one yet and I feel like I'm gonna say that every time a new MCU movie comes out because I said that about No Way Home but now this one even look even better and the VFX 90% of the time look amazing. There's some wonky stuff here and there, but for the most part, it looks fantastic. Practical effects look really great. The action is directed really well, and I really enjoyed it. This is some of the best action that we've gotten since the Russo brothers. Uh, you know, Endgame, Infinity War, Winter Soldier, Civil War. And he really put a lot of his quirkiness, with, especially in the third act, and with the horror elements. This is the first horror movie in the MCU. Now... Is it so scary that people who don't like horror is going to be turned off? No. If you've watched a lot of horror movies, this movie's not going to scare you. But if you're not someone that is coming and expecting that, I wanted to let you know because there is some scary moments, scary music, jump scares in this movie because it has horror elements throughout. And I gotta give big ups to Danny Elfman. He did the score for this movie. He did a fantastic job really bringing those horror elements and some really unique music to this movie that we haven't seen in other MCU movies. And when it comes to the action, the set pieces are extravagant. They're long and they're really really entertaining I, I was really enjoyed all the action set pieces we got they were very they weren't all the same and we got like a lot of different characters doing a lot of different things matching different powers and I got really excited to see like some of the funnier action moments some of the more serious action moments and then action within the horror element I think those were all executed really well and very visually pleasing this is a Doctor Strange movie if you've seen the first one his movie was trippy 
it was colorful it was really really different from all the other films that came around it and a lot of those aesthetics not as much as I would like but a lot of those aesthetics came here with little Sam Raimi flares if you've seen some of his movies like the Evil Dead trilogy Don't Drag Me to Hell a lot of things that he does in that those movies he brings in here and even a little bit of the Spider-Man trilogy because he directed the Tobey Maguire ones you can see a little bit of the flares from those movies in here as well and yes the movie looks great and the action set pieces are great but the acting is very strong especially from uh, Benedict Cumberbatch who plays Doctor Strange he knows this character inside out he gets it he understands how to play this character and he does a great job once again just taking the source material seriously and playing this like this is an auteur movie like an indie movie like just really getting into the character and doing this thing and then Elizabeth Olsen if you saw her in WandaVision she was fantastic in that show, award-worthy in my opinion, and she brings some of that over here. It's a bit different. I don't think she, that she rose to the level of WandaVision, but also can't really be compared because they had, what, nine episodes there. This is just a two-hour and three to seven-minute movie, so she didn't get um, as much time to flex her skills in this movie. And another thing that felt fresh that the Sam Raimi and crew brought in was the horror elements, but the violence. This is the most violent MCU movie to date, and I'm not exaggerating. There's impalement, there's gore, there's a little bit of blood, but it's nothing too crazy if you're used to watching movies outside the MCU. If you watch horror movies, if you watch other like more R-rated action movies, you've seen things way worse than this. But this is a PG-13 MCU under the Disney Banner movie. And this is the most gruesome I think any movie under the Disney Banner has been. And it's fitting for the horror aspect. And I like that they, they did that. They pushed that PG-13 right to the edge. So sometimes where I went, I like, well, I just didn't expect it. Like the people I was watching the movie with was like cringe. Like, oh, okay, well, this is where we're doing. This is what's going on. And this is called the Multiverse of Madness. So we got to see a lot of cool different different versions of worlds and Doctor Strange got to meet different versions of himself which was cool and also he got to meet different versions of characters some that we never met and some we know and love. The price of admission is great just for the cameos that's a really big cool part of this movie that it was in the ad campaign but the cameos were really surprising and really wowed me even certain characters that i suspected to be in the movie were there but even other characters that I did not suspect from them to the bring from past stuff from some things that you know a lot of people haven't seen so i thought that was really dope and it's worth seeing these characters in live action and in the way that they did it i thought that was really really strong how they did that now let's talk about the bad so yes this movie was pleasing visually has strong acting has strong action sequences cameos that will make your mind blow up but the story, the plot, the motivations, the story arcs of the characters were paper thin. There was no real strong plot to the, to the movie. There was no real strong story arcs to each character. And this was the most egregious with our three main characters. Doctor Strange. His character arc was spelled out throughout the movie, but they did not execute it. They dropped the ball. He's in the same place he was in from all the way in 2016 with his first movie there was no progression and they teased it and just did nothing because how messy the story was wanda the most egregious and the thing that hurt the movie for me the most is her story arc i'm a big fan of the character from they showed her from age of ultron but wanda vision made me really love this character and what they did here was interesting but it didn't feel right it didn't feel on par with the character that we just got from the show what was it, a year or two years ago WandaVision came out? I didn't like her her arc. I didn't like how unnuanced her arc was. In the WandaVision show, she, there was a nuanced reason for why she was doing it, even though it was wrong. But then we had layers to her character. Here, she became this one single-minded character that I just didn't appreciate the motivations or where her character started and where it ended. It just felt really weird. And then America Chavez wasn't even a character. She was a MacGuffin. She was a tool. She felt like an infinity stone that everyone was chasing after. And she got like little quirky lines here and there. But as someone that's a fan of the character and know what she's supposed to represent, it's, it feels like she got Disney-fied. And it's not against the actress because she seems great. But she doesn't feel like the character. On top of that, she doesn't get any character development or to have any autonomy. Everything is 
is just running, screaming, and being held up by somebody else, and like like she was just like a tool. So I did. I really didn't like that part of the story. I like I said, I felt like the story arcs were cut short. They weren't fleshed out, and I think that this movie was just too fast. It, it's two hours, but it feels like it's an hour and twenty minutes. It's just go 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 go. From as soon as the movie starts, it starts off with this cold opening and you're like, wait, what's happening? Who's these people? And, it, and from then it just doesn't stop. And I think watching the movie, I liked it. It was like, okay, let's go, we're, we're pacing. We don't need to slow down. We're in this world already. We know the MCU. At, when you get to the end, it doesn't feel like there's enough. It feels like this movie should have been 20 minutes longer so they could have fleshed out not only the story arcs of those three characters, but some of the action sequences and some of the cameos as well. The, even though my mind was blown by the cameos who was playing who and what characters they use, it felt like a waste of potential. It, it was like almost a blink and they're gone kind of thing. And I, and I felt like they could have been done more if we had a longer movie and it didn't meander on certain parts, especially another thing that bothered me about this movie. Towards the third act, especially when the horror elements started creeping in more, I know Sam Raimi got, like, fans are gonna be really mad about what I'm about to say, but his hokiness, his cheesiness really started creeping in. There's this particular scene towards the, uh, the end of the third, the second act into the third act that almost took me completely out of the movie. It's in a tunnel. If you saw the movie, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to spoil anything, but I was like, what the hell is going on? This is the most cheesiest, stupidest thing I've seen in an MCU movie in a long time. And hey, the movie got me back after we got past that part, but I was just like, what is happening? And it was like some cheesy speeches that you would see in a CW show. It was just really confusing because everything before it was solid. And then it just started getting going literally messy in the third act. And this last part, I just just want to set everyone expectation that has not seen the movie yet this is not a crazy multiverse movie this is not the, like this title the multiverse of madness it's not that we don't go to a bunch of different universes we kind of do but it's more of a montage kind of way and just like set your expectations on that this is more of a doctor strange and Wanda story with America Chavez stuck in the middle of it and we got we go to like one or two universes and that's basically it and I thought that was very disappointing because they didn't advertise the movie in that way they didn't advertise it as this personal story with these two characters they advertise it and title it in a way that you think is going to be this crazy multiversal we get to go in different places kind of movie and that's not what we got so let's talk about my verdict so did this live up to my expectation no was it widely and entertaining yes is it a really great step forward for the mcu i also think yes i'm happy that sam raimi even though some of his elements that he did didn't mesh with me that well i know people are going to love it the the, the the quirkiness the horror elements i know people that are not gonna like it because they come to these movies expecting a clean cut you know not, nothing too crazy movie and nothing too scary and they're gonna be you know they're not gonna pay attention to how this movie was advertised and come in and be like what the hell is this so let me know in the comments down below what you think about this movie be my grade for it overall is a C plus. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be notified more about movies. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. What you think about and you know the cameos and the story arcs and how the way the, it looked. That really cool musical battle that happened. Put spoiler tags if you're gonna spoil. I don't want anybody to get really spoiled. But I'm excited to talk more to more people about this movie. And you can watch more of my content right now.